Raft Repeat Construction is the design-build contractor for all of your construction needs. Quality and customer satisfaction will always remain our top priority. The American Dream has inspired the Raft Repeat team to push to be community leaders and support the local youth because that is our future. Let's now talk with the founder and owner, Brad Pryor. Hey guys, we're here today to talk about some common questions about when it comes to on the front end of our work when we're coming out to do a site visit. We're actually going to talk about needing certain things for that, and that being a survey, uh, the deed restrictions, um, all that good stuff that would be on that survey, and, and basically what that does is help us figure out exactly what is our restrictions and how the property is, is sculpted. And that survey, how I mean sculpted, is more or less that survey is going to give us uh, the means of, okay, the build lines. Uh, any easements or uh, utility easements, stuff like that. Uh, and it'll show us those things that we got to work against when we're out there looking at elevation. So, okay, so you got a build line of 20 feet or 10 feet. Um, you have a floodplain at, you know, 100 feet in. So if you want to build it here, but, you know, that utility easement or that floodplain or uh, cemetery we ran into before, you know, and, and no kidding. Um, so, Colt, what else can you add to that when you're looking or asking for these things? And they're like, I, I got, I don't know how you have a survey. Because some of this land, they don't even have surveys. You know, they don't have things to look at other than whatever the, whatever the realtor gave them. And most of the time it's just a legal description on a, on a deed that was recorded 80 years ago. And they're like, well, I, you know, I can buy the property that way. So why do I need a survey? Why do you as a builder need a survey? So what do you think the most common things we ran up against when we, back in the old days when we, had, we didn't demand that? What obstacles did we run into not having that? Right, I mean, obviously it kind of dep depends on the property and, and how big it is, but when you get in kind of smaller lots and places, I mean, those easements make a lot of difference because it really tells you what you can put a structure over and, you know, uh, some easements allow you to do a driveway over it or, or can't put a structure, but you can put a porch over it. So all those things that really matter because, you know, we've ran into situations before where you know, if we're six inches over it, we got to basically start over right. because we're over a boundary line. So it's very important to be able to have that on paper. Um, you know, so a lot of cities require a form board survey, um, stuff like that, uh, municipalities. So, I mean, you can't have a form board survey without a, without a survey to begin with, you know, right. so. Well, and a lot of things that are labeled in a survey too have the actual restrictions of the structure too. Eve heights, uh, ridge lines, masonry finishes, that all that stuff is attached in the survey. But to me, I feel like one of the most common uh, survey that has been, become so crucial lately is lake lots. Mm -hmm. By the way, if you're buying a lake lot, it's not gonna be flat. That's why there's a lake there. That's what I always tell everybody is the reason why lake lots are lake lots is because they have elevation and water's going to the lake. So expect there to be some dirt work you know, in your mix. But these build lines, like, I mean, we have these lots that are 120 foot wide, 300 foot deep. Well, time you put a build line of 10 foot on both sides, you know, that restricts you down to a very small amount of square footage or, or width of a building. And then when you're trying to get drained around the building, you know, it comes into all play. And, you know, you got to be very careful when you're selecting that land, you know, that land or that lot. It, it may look pretty, you may be the, the lot of your dreams, but that's stuff that we got to look at beforehand before you go invest and sign a contract with us. Well, hey, how are we going to get the driveway in there? Number one, how are we going to get the utilities in there? And what are our restrictions when we build this from the cosmetics, the finishes to you know, all that, that's the stuff we need to know. And our budget might look great on paper until we get out there and start talking about those items. Right, exactly. And I think, uh, you know, one thing that I've seen from our customers lately is, you know, especially if there's a realtor involved, the realtor's job is to sell you the land, obviously. So every, every piece of land you look at is gonna be the best thing ever. Well, <clears throat> they don't really, you, they might not alert you to the fact that you might have to have 80% masonry on your building. Well, 80% masonry on a 4,000 square foot house is a, a pretty good chunk of change, you know, compared to, to sheet metal, um, which is probably what we would initially budget it. So knowing those things up front, we can realistically tell you what it's going to cost rather than kind of guessing. But, you know, especially when you're dealing with a realtor, you definitely want to look at, you know, where the utilities are located. If the closest power is, you know, two miles away, that land's cheap, but it's going to cost you triple what the land would cost just to get power to the property. Right. Same thing with what side of the road is the water on. If you have to bore underneath a, a main highway, um, that's going to be a lot of money because the water's on the wrong side of the road. You well, know? And what about this too? Like when we go out west, West 35, there may not be water available until five miles down the road and there may not be a capability to get water from a well. 
So you're responsible for getting that water to that property. It, nobody owes you the accessibility. You have to pay for it to get there like everybody else did. Yep. And that's a big, huge you know, chunk of change when you start looking at this piece of property costs this. This is like, not, nah, man, I don't know why this is so much cheaper. There's always usually a reason, yep. especially in today's market. You find a cheap piece of property, you know, something's up with it most of the time. Or there's something. And I, you know, now I will tell you too about realtors is like, make sure your realtor's asking what you're gonna build, what you expect out of the property. And if they're not getting that out of you up front, you might wanna go to another realtor because their job is really to take care of you and explain all the things that we're talking about to you because that is their job ultimately. But in this hot market that we're in, they're not doing that. Right. They're just power selling, you know, because people will buy it, they don't care. You know, and, and not that they don't care or, or whatever, but they're not tuning into the stuff because they don't have to make sales right now. They're just coming to them. Or they have 15 people that are working on it at the same time, so they're trying to get it, get it knocked out as fast as possible. And they might overlook that kind of stuff, but you know, sometimes you definitely want to double check on the information you're getting from them because, you know, you say you buy the property not knowing exactly what you're going to build or what the restrictions are. Well, then you decide that that's not the property for you. Well, now the per, you know, if you wanted to list it again, that person's going to wonder, well, why did you sell it so fast? Well, then you pretty much got to disclose the fact that, well, I couldn't build the house I wanted to here or powers that far away. Now you're locked into, you know, a lot of money for, for land that you're not even going to be able to use or sell again. Well, and a good rule of thumb to me, because a lot of, of times you'll send me on a site visit and the client's like, oh, it's pretty flat. You know, we hear this a million times. And I would have put off. Yeah. <laughs> but I tell people, I said, go from the front of your, whatever building, a house, a building, whatever, walk a hundred feet past the point of it, where it's starting. Turn around and look. If you can see that land, it would, eye level or anywhere remotely close, it's not flat. Mm. You know, and that's kind of the way I kind of look at a site. And it helps us steer into wow, you know, there's a lot more here than what we budgeted, you know, for your original budget, which keeps them out of trouble of wasting their time building a project or buying a land to do that. And we even, we even offer that before you buy a piece of land. Like we encourage customers to call us and say, hey, before you buy that, just call her at us, you know, and, and start planning a project. And while you're looking for land, but also when you find that piece, let us help you make sure it's going to fit for what you want. Yep. So I uh, hope this helped uh, with, with purchasing a piece of property. Burn hot on 7018. Check us out on our channel.